Hello YouTube, it's Tony, and so today I'll be showing you a Soul Altar Crafting Guide for 2018. Here are the requirements. You need 90 rune crafting, or you can otherwise boost this from as low as level 79. You also must complete the Fight Club quest. Yeah, I know this is a really long quest with several requirements, but trust me, it is well worth doing. Now because of this method, you must actually have two bank presets. Other than that, here is the rest of the requirements, so feel free to pause this video because I'll be moving on. Here is my equipment setup for preset number 1. I'll start with the ethereal outfit, and that will store your 12 pure essence, as well as make the pouches degrade slower. The wilderness sword is for the Edgeville teleport. The phoenix necklace is for surviving a PKer. Now obviously this is going to be in preset number 2. The combined catalyst fragment will make the pouches degrade slower. The large rune pouch is used to store the repair rune pouch runes. We finally have the portable fairy ring, so this lasts you 10 charges each. You definitely want to keep a lot of these in your bank. Now make sure in your bank preset, you set the portable fairy ring to active, so that way it can recognize it and withdraw it every single time. For preset number 1, here's my inventory setup. You want to have all 5 runecrafting pouches. Of course, don't forget that massive pouch does degrade to dust. Line the pouches up from largest to smallest on the preset. So you also want to have an offhand melee weapon, which is for the bladed dive switch. The perks I have are wise 2 and mobile. The rest of your inventory well, just fill it with pure essence. You also want to have an Abyssal Titan Beast of Burden preset checked. The legendary pet will then help you extend this for up to 2 hours long. Here is my preset number 2 for the equipment setup, and these are the only differences. You're going to use the same offhand melee weapon for the bladed dive switch. So the demonic skull will then increase the XP of runecrafting by 350%. In this case, I'd rather keep my large rune pouch in my bank because I'd rather not risk it. The only difference in the second inventory preset is that this time, you should have exactly 11 decorated runecrafting urns. Nothing more, nothing less. I'll explain a little bit later how this works. Of course, bring an urn enhancer if you own that. Here is how you set this whole thing up. Go to any fairy ring and type in the code CKQ. Then you're going to go to the travel log and favorite this from the fairy ring interface. Now, the first time you enter, you actually must empty the fountain. It's really simple. Just use the wicked hood that has the soul talisman filled inside it, and you should be good to go. You also must make sure you have no partially filled runecrafting urns in either your inventory or your bank. If you do have it, then either you destroy it or just fill it and then teleport it away. Of course, set both bank presets. Now, you want to set your left click familiar option to take Beast of Burden. Keybind the following in this order. The ethereal body, the medium pouch, the small pouch, then take beast of burden, the giant pouch, and finally the large pouch. So how I fill the pouches really fast, well, load preset number 1 and hit the escape key to close it faster. You're going to hit the keys as I mentioned in the order above, so I'm not going to repeat that same thing again. Now at this point, you should have exactly one pure essence. If you don't, then well, either the server didn't register your keybinds or you just probably didn't press them anyways. Open the bank again and right click to fill the massive pouch. Finally, load the preset number 1 again, and start your trip. Here is a strategy on charging the altar. So, load your preset number 1 and fill the pouches of course. Use your portable fairy ring, and go to the code as I repeated before, CKQ. You're gonna enter the fountain directly south, then go east, and hit bladed dive along the minimap. So, when you enter the altar, you're gonna surge directly north. Now you're gonna deposit all the essence to the charger, and then right click to charge the altar. So this is only located on the right side, just keep that in mind. As you notice, your character is going to charge this altar for 2.5 minutes. Like, I was even able to edit a couple of videos while I was doing this. Because it hardly gives you any XP for charging, it's not worth the extra 3 inventory slots for the urns and the enhancer. The charger can hold only 100 pure essence as well as 100 charges. Since every 4 essence will give you 1 charge, that means every trip will give you 25 charges. If you're not sure, then you can right click to check the storage, just to see how many charges or essences you have. Before you craft, you must do this 3 times in a row, or 4 times if this is your first time. Do not, and I mean do not craft the soul runes, because this will significantly reduce your XP per hour. So now that I've charged this 3 times, I'm going to show you how to craft the runes. After you fill the pouches, don't forget to load your preset number 2. So use the wilderness sword to Edgeville. Now you're going to surge north and climb over the ditch. You want to hit anticipate a few steps later. You then want to click on your minimap and hit bladed dive diagonally, and this should send you really close to the Zamrak mage. Now you can otherwise barge if there's a skeleton nearby. Just like I explained in my abyss runecrafting guide, you want to pick the nearest shortcut to enter the inner ring, 
only do the agility or the mining shortcuts, with the agility one being faster. The other shortcuts are really slow, so I wouldn't even bother with that. Enter the Soul Altar, and that should be in the east section of the inner ring. This is really important, and you must deposit the essence first. After that, you're going to craft the Soul Altar, and that will give you a massive XP drop. You want to charge the Soul Altar again. If you don't charge it, you'll have to do this 4 times for charging instead of 3 times. You know how I told you to deposit the essence first before crafting the altar, right? Well, the reason being is that you won't use the urns in your inventory, which means you're missing out on 20-25% to XP from this. Unless you have a partially filled urn, that's a different story. As you saw right there, I did use exactly 11 decorated runecrafting urns. However, if you do have a partially filled urn in your inventory or your bank, it won't actually fill that instead. Here are the other tips I have. Now the chance of encountering a peak here, I mean, is really slim. You really only need to enter the wilderness 5 times in an hour. Yeah, I know, you do get skulled for entering the abyss. However, by the time you charge the altar 3 times, the skull gets removed by then, so essentially you will be able to protect 3 items, unless you're skull tricked, of course. Always keep track of the rotation. What I do is type this in the public chat for example, like 2 out of 3, which means the second charge out of the third charge. Here is a summary of my strategy. Charge the altar 3 times using the portable fairy ring, then enter the abyss and craft that. So now, don't forget to charge before you leave. It's really complicated at first, and yes, I did have trouble understanding the mechanics. However, it's pretty straightforward afterwards. The only thing is, you just gotta keep track of the rotation. So by doing this entire rotation, it should take you around 12 to 13 minutes. So Abyss Runecrafting is around 270k XP per hour. It's also more click intensive as well as being more risky. The only issue is that it's less GP per hour, and secondly, not everyone likes quests, which I truly understand if you're going to do the Abyss Runecrafting method. If you need a guide on this, I will leave that link in the description. So here is the XP rates. In 76 minutes, I got 740 Runecrafting XP, and I consumed 66 decorated Runecrafting urns. Now I did have bonus XP, the Wise 2, as well as the 5% outfit. So the XP per hour with bonus XP is 585k. Without bonus XP, you'd get 461k. Now, as you can see right here by this calculation, the bonus XP isn't doubled completely, just like the Abyss Runecrafting. I only crafted 430 soul runes, so it's not really a good amount for Iron Man or even people who are trying to make money for runecrafting. I also consumed around 2 portable fairy rings. What I would suggest you disassemble for fungal components are ganodermic boots and gloves. The healthy components and the organic parts, well, the energy potions are the best choice. For those who don't have access to the portable fairy rings, I'm not actually sure how fast it is using the Taklozo third option. Feel free to let me know in the comments your XP rate on this. So to conclude this method, yes, it's actually the fastest runecrafting method in the game. Well conventionally that is, unless you do Wicked Hood or something. Because of the high XP drops and the high XP per hour, this would make this the fastest way to get runecrafting pet. Now if you still don't understand what I'm saying, I do have a 1 hour footage and I'll leave that link in the description. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already, because I'll definitely be doing more skilling guides in the future.